Hello everyone, my name is Zero. Welcome to the second part of my series of explaining the FPU. If you don't know what floating point is yet, then I recommend you that you watch the first video first. They both released at the same time. If you already know what floating point is, then you can keep on watching. In this video, this video is going to be rather unprofessional as I'm probably going to improvise most of it but otherwise with scripting and everything I wouldn't be able to get this video under one hour long we'll see how long it takes I'll try my best showing everything and not making it too long so yeah we'll see um, one thing about the FPU in general is that it's more of a proof of concept or prototype if you want to call it like that like there are some really obvious mistakes I did some really stupid stuff that makes it way slower than it should actually be or could actually be so yeah I'm definitely gonna redo the whole thing sometime but yeah so let's crack on so here we have our display well, not really display, like our output and input. You have already seen that, and here we can choose our operations, our four. What I'll start with is the exponent. So here we have an adder uh, or su and subtractor. For denormalizing the adder, this thing here um, is a uh, input swap up. So when it's adding, it's adding 127, uh, um, subtracting the ex when an exponent is positive, it's subtracting 127. If it, the um, exponent is negative, it will switch around, put 127 as the A input, and the exponent as the B input, and get the exponent like that, and set a flag to one here on the side. So it does that to both outputs, uh, to both exponents. Here we have a little tabel, like a little debugger or decoder that basically says all the different combinations when the sign bit is one. Then here we yeah here we are. here is the input for both exponents. Here is a comparator. It tells if wh what not what of those two numbers is bigger for the addition. Then here are the two buses for both numbers, and they go into this giant thing here on the side. Here we have another decoder deciding. It like if it's going on top here those two fingers are the adders on top here are for uh, calculating um, how many times it has to shift and then outputting the normal exponent on top here again so the bigger one here down below we have another comparator for um, in case we have a negative or positive exponent this here is for multiplying and dividing. This adder here is also a swap uh, A and B input swap up. Here is a multiplexer that uh, inverts the input for the subtraction. It goes over here. Then here we have a shifter, like multi multiplexer that shifts to the one to the right. That is for the square root. And here on top, we've got the result. Here it will be, he, here it's getting normal, uh, denormalized again, so adding the bytes 127. Here we have a little flag in case um, the exponent is negative, so that instead it's, um, it subtracts the number here from 127. And it outputs it here. Here, those the uh, the exponent from multiplying, dividing, and square root, and the one from adding meets here at this multiplexer. And here we have a little subtractor 
for sub for division and subtraction in case we have to shift to the right the red exponent to the left the red exponent so that it subtracts from the exponent we have a little adder in case um, in the multi while multiplying the exponent there is a carry on the side and we have to shift the exponent and yeah then it goes here to the display and let's swap to the other side so you can see it a bit better here is the comparator here is uh, the input switch again so one the big input goes straight to the adder the B input goes down here into the sparrow shifter now with the result we've got from um, over there um, how many times we have to shift this arrow shifter here shifts the number goes around here over here that is the last shifter for 16 and here is a uh, inverter just in case we're subtra subtracting and then it goes over here up here this um, this ladder slap ladder then here it's adding those two numbers or subtracting depends now here we have a multiplexer that is shifting again in case while adding we got a carry so that it shifts from one to the right and it will also send a carry signal to, um, wait where is it over here to one of the to the exponent thing here so that it adds one then here it goes up here top of this here is a little multiplexer the second input I'll show you later goes over here here's a barrel shifter but th this time going into the other direction so in case when subtracting um, the the leading bit is f uh, is way too far to the um, right so we can get the relics point back there and then it will it will automatically correct um, automatically calculate over here how many times it has to shift here's a little encoder thingy and then it will shift it to the right and also um, subtract the number over here like I showed you before so this goes over here and then outputs over here so yeah then let's move on to multiplying and division and square root and so on so we'll go back over here we have an additional look the a b inputs do a little funny way over here come to the side over here and they so uh, sorry for the cut here my parents are annoying me okay so let's continue here we get our a input comes down over here it does a little detour through the adder that's one of the mistakes I mentioned for example then the B input goes down over yeah it comes from down below over here that is scrapped straight from the adder then those two go on a journey far far back there till it comes up over here here it goes into the multiplier both of these and here the B input does another little journey to the left for the divider I'm sh first I'm gonna show you the multiplier a bit it's a 24-bit multiplier um, I don't know who's, whose design it was again I'll probably put it uh, on here like a little text and link it in the description he also made the divider I just modified both designs used my own adder made it a bit more compact tried to speed it up a bit but otherwise it's his design so yeah here's the multiplier goes all the way from here over here it's 24 bit 
then here goes the A input and the B input goes here to the side now they come up over here and now you'll see probably my biggest mistake I was so stupid and included um, these things here on the side there's a normally here in his design or her um, that uh, it shifts so it aligns both numbers when dividing so the most significant numbers so the most significant bits are aligned correctly for subtraction but in this case we don't need it because we always got that leading bit so it's a fixed position so this whole thing down below here is kind of unnecessary and this thingy but yeah like I said it was more of a proof concept I actually designed a, div a better divider in my other world it uses a different ad that is way first and smaller and doesn't lag so much but yeah that's, that will be in the FPU version 2 so here we have our in this case actually adders that's why that design is really interesting in my opinion because it uses adders instead of subtractors and then determines by the carry and by the position and then we got the outputs over here now we'll fly to the end that takes a long time because this thing is so huge and almost there and there we are here is our multiplier result, uh, divider result. Here is our, down below here is our multiplier result. Here we have a little multiplexer that determines which one go uh, over here, which determines which one go, um, goes back to goes to the front. So travels over here. Then here is the multiplex I mentioned before. Another one, so here is where the divider and the uh, multiplier and the add on meets. So when this multiplex is switched, the divider and multiplier, the signal can go through and it goes through the same shifting result over here. And it will also calculate if maybe it needs to go to the side. So then we have our last guy or girl. Our square root extractor. It goes all the way over here. Here we have the sh uh, here the shifter gives it results if it uh, if the sh it's not if it's uh, if after the shifting one to the r one to the right or dividing by two, it got a remainder remainder. Then here is another one of my mistakes. Um, when building this in the test world, I built all of these in another world and then moved them in with MC Edit or World Edit. I accidentally swapped most significant and least significant bit at the input, so I have to do the funny wiring here. And here we have a shifter, which decides depending on if we had a remainder or not. What if the number is shifted one to, one to the left or not? And then here we have our square root cell. So it's got two stages. Goes up to here. Then the, the first floor gives it outputs over down below over here. And here's the second floor. Gives it, gives it the um, output right over here. Then they meet over here, going to this ladder, slab ladder. Come all the way over here. 
go up over here and meet in this multiplexer over here. So yeah, this is basically most of the FPU. Here we have like here we have some rank from the operation because because uh, of too much lag, I uh, um I had to do some nor gate nor gates. I think I add some. Cause at at the beginning, when I added a number, it also multiplied it. It also divided those two. It also calculated the square root all at once. It just gave the output I wanted from each operation. But because of all the calculations all going on at the same time and so many light updates and block updates, uh, there was tons of tick lag. Like so much. It one calculation could took 10 minutes compared to 2 or 3 minutes so I added some NOR gates and the side here and those control lines and only when one of those lines is on the um, A and B inputs are going in or are allowed to go in and, then it, and only then it will calculate so for example you can see that over here we have a torch inverting it blo blocking those snore gates over here and doesn't matter what um, if any of these wires are on there's nothing going through till that torch is turned off so yeah it's kinda the end of the video it's a bit more unprofessional but I didn't want to make it too long I hope I explained it well. Normally I don't because I'm bad at exp explaining stuff. I would be the worst teacher ever. But I, hey, I'm making this for fun. So yeah. Well, download is in the description of the trailer video. And the, sh the showcase thingy. curious and yeah thanks for watching